morning, everybody. Shalom, shalom. Let's welcome everybody on Facebook this morning to God Adventure as well, our international audience. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you to the house of fire. I want to welcome you to the house of revival. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You stepped into the arena of liberty right now. And God has got a plan for you today, my friend. The other day I was watching on two weeks ago or three weeks ago when I was announcing. I wasn't aware of the camera being on. So I was walking down that way there and then I just hear my voice and I move out of the picture. And I see there I come back into the picture again. So I'll stand still today for a while. <laughs> I'm actually a walker, you know, when, I, when, I, when I've got the mic I like to, I like to walk. Uh, fire on you today, my brother. You catch the fire last week, eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but you know what? Something is happening right here at God Adventure. Man, there's an outpouring taking place in this place. And I want you to get excited for the, what the Lord is going to do in you and through you today, my friend. And listen, the Lord doesn't want any spectators today. You, you need to jump into the river. Because the river is, you know, the, the river has got di different depths. There are certain depths to the river. And over here, you, you're going to be ankle deep. Here, you waist deep. And there, you're right over your head right there. <laughs> so you need to step into the river. You need to jump into the river. Because the Holy Ghost is going to be touching you today. And he doesn't want you to hold back. All reli religiosity is going to go today. It's going to break off you in the name of Jesus. Whatever doesn't need to be with you today is leaving. It's leaving. And I declare that this is a COVID-free zone. This is a cancer-free zone. This is a sick-free zone. Uh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We just release that over you today. In Jesus' mighty name. And I just release tons and tons of joy over you today. In Jesus' mighty name. Fire like you've never experienced before is going to be rolling off this, this, this platform this morning uh, and coming right down to touch you. In the name of Jesus. Do you guys still remember Norman? I spoke to you about Norman a couple of weeks ago. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to go over that story again, but that fire is going to be rolling down. The balls of fire is going to come down and it's going to touch you today in the name of Jesus. Even you on the Facebook audience as well. I just encourage you to come back to the house of the Lord. You know, the, the devil has put so much fear in people that they've accepted it as normal to stay home and to watch church on their smartphones and on their computers. But listen, you need to come back to the saints. The fire here, you cannot feel that fire at home. And so we're just calling you back today in the name of Jesus. We'll see you. Listen, you can still come here in time if you're in East London. But next week, Sunday, will be a good time for you to start and to get back to the house of the Lord. We bind up that spirit of fear that might be crippling you in the name of Jesus. And we just release that liberty to you. And Father, we just pray this morning for the band, for your worship team. We just release fire on them right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let it roll down from you onto them and just touch everybody in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, as the Levites lead us this morning, Father, may the fire of the Holy Ghost touch them. Each and every one of them, Father, be touched in the name of Jesus. Father, each and every one of your children in this place as well, may they be touched supernaturally today in Jesus' mighty name. We just declare breakthrough coming to you through your worship today. Sickness is going to leave you this morning as you worship him in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, and we give you all the honor. And everybody says a big, big amen. amen. Hallelujah. You're going to have fun this morning. We've got communion because there's power in the blood. There is wonder-working power in the blood. <laughs> we thank you for your wonder-working power. <laughs> yeah. Oh, communion. Oh, it has, okay. Communion, yeah, there's a communion table here, over there, and one at the back. Two at the back. And you are free to come up and have communion anytime during worship. So doing it a bit differently today. Just feel free um, to come up with a friend.
friend, with family, and join a group you're already up here anytime during worship. Come stand with us. You have to move with this one. Thank you for the blood of the Lamb. We just celebrate the blood of the Lamb this morning. Yeah. Yeah, and thank you that it is just, it flows so free. It just flows so free. We've been um, in a, on an interesting journey as a worship team. We've, uh, we've suspended all practices. So the only time we actually practice is on a Sunday morning when we come together. And instead of practicing like we do on a Wednesday, we gather as a whole team. And we're just beginning to go deep with some healing. Um, we're doing a, 
we're exploring the Father's embrace, what it is just to live in, just to live in His arms. And, you know, He's doing such a deep work in all of us because we don't want to be a team that have anything to prove up here. But we don't, we don't want to find our identity in what we do and how we worship. But we want to find our identity in the one who loves us, if, in the one who gave his life freely for us. So. And in this place, there's been a lot of brokenness. There's been a lot of vulnerability and authenticity. And we're finding that uh, the best thing that we can do is actually is find each other's hearts as well. Because when we are one with him and when we are one with one another, there is nothing that stops that flow. So out of that place, I wrote a song because I just wanted to testify what he's doing. And so we're going to do it now. And as I said, we've, we've literally just done it now. <laughs> but it's really our testimony of what he's doing. And he's not just doing it in the worship team. He's doing it with us. He's doing it with all of us. You know, every Sunday we've been seeing people just getting healed. On the, healed in an encounter. Healed when they just encounter the Father's love. You know, He's restoring the broken places. You know, before, you know, we've got a great dream and a great vision for God adventure. We want to see a city saved. We want to see a nation changed. And that's on the Father's heart. His heart is to see His kingdom come on earth. But first of all, you know, he's looking at this here. And he's looking to mend hearts and heal those deep places in all of us. So with this song, just, you know, you don't have to sing it. If you want to sing it, join in. Otherwise, just, you know, it's an invitation to Holy Spirit to just come and blow on through. Holy Spirit, just breathe on me. Come and blow on through, Holy Spirit. Come and do your thing, Holy Spirit. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your Spirit. It's by your spirit. It's by your spirit. It's by your spirit. And we love you, Holy Spirit. We need you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit.
I want to try it again. we continue to sing this song these are very powerful words inviting Holy Spirit to breathe on you that conveys stillness be still and know that I am God we must be filled with his life allow him to breathe upon us in stillness 
And yet then we say, Holy Spirit, blow on through. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but don't know where it comes from or where it's going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. From that place of stillness and being filled with the Holy Spirit and experiencing the healing that that brings, we go forth, we move, and we take that kingdom into the world around us, bringing more healing and restoration. This is precisely why after Jesus was baptized, he was still in the desert for 40 days facing the temptations. And after that, he was launched into his ministry. So I feel like we need to continue to sing the song a bit more. Where is the Lord asking you to be still and be filled with his life? And then what is he calling you to go forth and do out of that place of stillness, bringing restoration and healing to the world around us. Breathe on me, Holy Spirit, blow on through. Holy Spirit, breathe on me, come and blow on through. Holy Spirit, breathe on me, Holy Spirit, blow on through. Holy Spirit, breathe. He's causing you to mount on wings like eagles. He's causing you to mount on wings like eagles. He's causing you to mount on wings like eagles. He's renewing your youth. He's renewing your youth. He's renewing your youth. He's renewing your youth. He's renewing your song. He's renewing your song. He's renewing your song. He's renewing your song. Sara, 
God wants us to prophesy on whatever dead hopes that we had, on whatever dead situation or something that we thought wouldn't happen. So I just want us to corporately sing Come Alive Dry Bones as a prophetic declaration. Come alive, come alive, dry bones. Come alive, dry bones. Come alive, dry bones. Come alive, dry bones. just got um, reminded of the man whose son was full of all the spirits and he was desperate and he heard that God could do something and he went to him and he said Jesus do something and Jesus spoke and he said I believe you but help my unbelief and I feel like God's saying this morning that yes there's so many places in our areas that look beyond that man was beyond. His son was beyond what anything he could do, and he had tried everything. And I feel like God's saying, I need you to be still and hear the voice of the Lord to say, dry bones. No. And when you don't have the capacity to believe, <laughs> to say, Jesus, help my unbelief, help my doubt, because your word is true, and I know what you say will happen. So we speak to those dry bones again and say, live, live, live. 
Help me to let go and stop striving to make things happen, but to let go and know, God, that you have us in the palm of your hands. You have our situations. You have our family. You have everything. Help the unbelief. Help doubt. And cause those dry bones to live.
There's somebody on the live stream now, you're not coming to church because you've got COVID-19 and as you're worshipping it's your breath in my lungs, I declare that you are healed in the name of Jesus. His breath is going right through your lungs right now, my friend. You are healed of COVID-19. We bind up that foul spirit of infirmity in your lungs in the name of Jesus. And as someone who was praising here in the auditorium this morning, depression left you in the mighty name of Jesus. You had burdens when you came in here this morning, but you are released of them this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. That foul spirit of depression leaves you now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And somebody with employment problems, you've been retrenched due to COVID-19. Your job is on the way. You are one praise away from a miracle. And I want you to lift up your voice. Man, make the devil confused. He's going to wonder why you're praising the Lord, even though you are afflicted. My friend, you are one praise away from your miracle in the name of Jesus. I want you to receive it this morning. Receive the fire of the Holy Ghost this morning. Man, those disciples, they were sitting in that upper room and they thought everything is lost. They thought their master is gone. What are we going to do? Are we going to go back to fishing? But they were sitting and they were waiting and they were praising because Jesus said, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. Man, and they were waiting and the Holy Spirit came to blow upon them. And he touched them. 
He filled them up with His fire. And today in this auditorium, we just release the wind of the Holy Spirit over you right now. The Ruach breath of God touching you right now in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost fire. touching you right now in the name of Jesus. Everything to go that's not of God in this place right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Today is a new day. Today is a new day. Today is a new day. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father, in the name of Jesus. No one like you, no one like you, no one like you. There's no one like you, no one like you, no one like you. There's no one like you, no one like you, no one like you.
your spirit begin to worship. Join with the angels. We join with the angels. Sing holy, holy one, holy, holy, holy one. Holy, holy one. Holy, holy one. Holy, holy.
you are worthy of our praises. You are worthy, you are worthy. You may join with heaven this morning singing glory, 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 holy, holy, worthy, 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 worthy. We join with heaven. We join with the angels. We join with the cloud of witnesses. We join with the elders and the saints. We are seated with them, with Christ in heaven. And we get to behold his majesty. We get to behold his beauty. We get to behold his wonder. We get to behold his glory. we fix our eyes on you this morning, everything else falls away. Awaken in us the reality of your reality, the reality of your reality, the reality of your truth. Even now, lies are just being disempowered in your minds, things that have filled your vision this week, things that have made you afraid, you seeing them in the light of his glory, in the light of his perspective, and those things are losing their grip, their grip to bring fear, those, those things are falling away even now. In the light of his glory, in the light of his majesty, those things are disempowered. had communion, I would encourage you, perhaps now is a good time to come forward before we go into the rest of the meeting.
as you come up to, to break bread together with your family and friends, I just want to remind you of the power that's in the blood of Jesus Christ. There's so much power right there. But as we were worshiping, just a, a heat came over my head. I actually started, almost started sweating. There was a heat. And I saw that the Lord was healing somebody's nervous system. It sits right here. He was healing the nervous system. You've got problems in your, your nervous system, in your hands especially. There's tingling in your hands. And also somebody with circulatory problems related to the heart. You are being healed today in the name of Jesus. Also I felt knees. My knees started feeling stiff. Somebody with problem with knees, you are healed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And every Sunday is not the same. You know, the Holy Spirit just touches people in a different way every Sunday. And I believe that last week's Sunday, there were like major breakthroughs in people as well. People were being touched last week's Sunday. And I want you to come expectant every Sunday. Don't come for last week's wine. Come for the new wine that the Lord is going to release on that particular day. You know, because many times people expect the thing to look like the old, you know, like what we had last week. We want the same. The Lord is doing something new each and every day. Each and every day. Where's Sidu Sisu? Sidu Sisu, you've got a, a testimony you want to share with us. Just put your mask on for, for COVID protocols case uh, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Morning, family. Um, so uh, I had to come up. Uh, you know, me coming up here is not a natural, but you, know, you step out of your comfort zone. Anyway, last year, it was the last service before we, we closed church, right? And I was at the back um, behind uh, Uncle Mike. After worship, he looked at me and he said, I have a word for you. So up until that point, to be honest, I have to be honest, I didn't really take his word seriously because I had seen him give a word for, for people, you know. So I thought, okay, he likes giving a word. So when he said, I've got a word for you, I thought my, to myself, here we go. And then he said, God said, I must tell you, the orders are coming. That went straight into my spirit by Pastor Mike. Now, what I, what, what, what I do, you know, I do training, right? So I was expecting some orders to come so I can do training. It was December now. So I went home, repented, Lord, I repent, you know, and really I meditated on the word, received the word. Fast forward to January, two orders came. And I was even saying to the Lord, Lord, he said the orders, so meaning more than one. Two orders came. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Three weeks back, we're at the back of the church. He's walking over from the sound area. He just touches him on the shoulder, and he says, there's more coming. <laughs> what happened after that? Three more orders came. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, Uncle Mike, would you stand? Good stand. <laughs> right now, before all these people, I want to honor you. There is something precious that you carry. You know, I want you to know that, you know, when I was praying about this, I think last week, I was going to give the testimony, but I kind of like, ah, you know, hesitation. I had this thing of John the Baptist, like you kind of a John the Baptist. You know, I don't know if that means anything to you, but you know, when the Pharisees, I mean, these guys came to ask John the Baptist, who are you? He said, I'm the lone voice, you know, crying from the wilderness. So I honor you today, and I want to quell any voice that would cause you to doubt that you hear from God. You hear from God very accurate, very accurately. So I end with this. In this ministry, in this house, there's such a rich diversity of gifting. I want to encourage you guys. Let your light shine. You don't know who you're going to touch. Let it, don't keep it underneath. Let it shine. 
let what God has put into you, let it shine for the blessing of the house of the Lord. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> so Monday is at, at 5.30. I'm not doing announcements now, but Monday is at 5.30. There's a, there's a business person and employees, in fact. If you want to desire to own a business one day, we have a prayer meeting down at the bottom there. Uh, Pastor Andre and then they started it. And Josh as well. Uh, but here's the thing. Sibu, thanks for your testimony. It's powerful. Eh? So whatever business you get out of this house, you must tithe from that business that you get. Amen. Thank you. It's coming into the house. <laughs> it's, it's actually something that we do, that we've decided to do in those, in those businessmen's meetings. Is that whatever business we give to each other, like if we give referrals and so forth, you get the business, you tithe from that first draw that you get, your first income, you tithe it into this house there because that's where the Lord blessed you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who's doing announcements this morning? Carmen, come out. Give it up for Carmen. Thank you, Dane. Okay. I need to put all my books down. Good morning, everybody. Awesome. Okay, so... Um, t so two things before I get to the announcements. Papa Dane, I actually have a word for you. <laughs> I saw um, when you were giving the word, this when you were leading this morning, that God has engraved the letter R into the side of your face here, which stands for revival. And not only do you, not only are you a facilitator of revival, but first you have to hear it. And I feel like he's given you an ear for what revival is. And so it's like it's at the ear because you hear and you speak. And when you hear and you're faithful to speak, it's like it literally breaks out. So you are amazing. And thank you so much for what you do in our home. <laughs> you're amazing. Um, then I want to talk to everybody a little bit about um, community this morning again. Uh, we are seeing such amazing things that are happening in our community group. Um, and I want to honor also Jen. Jen, you are doing such an awesome <laughs> job. <laughs> I want to honor you because you, you just do things differently. And I love the way that you're not afraid to do something completely different. Like what you're doing with our band on Wednesdays. And my sister is a part of that and her lovely fiance. <laughs> Um, and I can just see even in her life how much um, God is just moving and working. And I want to honor you because because of what you're doing with our band, it's flowing over into so many areas in our body. So thank you so much for, for doing that. And on that note, guys, some things are taught and some things are caught. Um, and I want to encourage you that if you're not part of a community group, then get involved in something in our home. If you want to get part, a part of sound team or if you want to be a part of the hospitality team, um, it's not about, it's not about, uh, it's not a, so much about what you're doing, but as much as it is about being a part of a family. Because in worship today, God was just showing me, he was saying like, there's, there's some things that you can only get from fathers. There's some things that you can only get from mothers. There are some things that you can only get from your brothers and sisters. And there's some things that you can only get from cousins. And when you're in family, you actually get those things. So I had a feeling this morning that there are some people that, that go, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. And I don't know and when's the breakthrough coming, when's the breakthrough coming, when's the breakthrough coming. And Kone gave me a word of encouragement earlier on in the year. He said, don't change anything in your life, only add strength. And I was just like, that is such a good word. <laughs> and one of the ways that you can do that in your life is to open yourself up to community and to open yourself up to invite powerful people. And sometimes, and I, I really want to encourage you, because sometimes when we're in a bad place in our life, it's really, really hard to come into the presence of powerful people because it's like we go, oh, you know, I'm so bad. Um, you're not bad. <laughs> You're just not finished yet. <laughs> um, so add strength. And one of the ways that you can do that is you can get involved here or you can join a community group. And on that note, last week Sunday, we had our first one of our first Connect Sundays in, in homes. I know Nat's 
um, and Kevin joined up with the Londons, or they joined forces, and Verena and Felix. And can we just honor those families for opening up their homes? It was amazing. So we will do that every beginning of the month. Okay, we will have homes open. And so if you're sitting in the in the congregation and you're going like, oh my gosh, my heart is to open up my home, please come and chat to me. The more homes we have open, like the better it is. The more people that are connected, the more strength there is. Then if you're wanting to join up with a house of revival, um, Kath and I, there's Kath at the back. Yay, go mama. Uh, we run a group on a Wednesday evening. Um, and then Dane and Glenise, there they are. They're amazing. They run a group on a Thursday evening. Um, so please do come and chat to us if you're interested in joining up. Then Healing Rooms happens on a Thursday evening. Um, and so you can join up on a Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Uh, then just a reminder about the Mercy Project. We've got the May Project, which is the Winter Project. And that's all about bringing warm goodies. Um, so if you have any warm goodies, please bring. And then our June Project is uh, the equipment for, I think, the playground, if I'm not mistaken. So if you want to uh, bring for that. There's Neil at the back. Wave that hand, Neil. There he is. Okay, that's the man to get in touch with. Um, and then we're still looking. We still have the little competition going on about the names for the homes. Um, at least the two properties, the two homes next door to us. Um, so if you have an awesome, powerful name that you think that we could call our home, please do submit that to our WhatsApp family group. And if you're not on the WhatsApp family group, it's a great way to add strength to your life and know what's going on. Um, and so please come. And Nat, do we have a, do we have at the back? Yes, at the back there is a list that you can put your name and your contact details. Then last but not least, on just like uh, they were saying, on Monday evening, um, we are uh, there is a prayer and fellowship meeting. Uh, and Sibu was referring to that as well. Uh, to so you can join up with um, Papa Andre and Josh. Um, and come and add some strength to your life in that way. Right. Let's just take it to a whole new level now. Who do I call up? Do I, is it, yeah, oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thanks, Carmen. So it's time for us to take our tithes and offerings up. And uh, I was sharing a message this morning on, on the radio. By the way, who, who listens to, to the morning man on a Sunday? Anybody? Just a few of you. Thank you. Thanks. We'll lay hands on the others who don't and uh, later on. <laughs> just joking. Just joking. So we had a, I shared a message of, hold on guys, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just wait. We need to collect this money in the jewelry. That's when it happens. So I was sharing a message of Peter this morning and, uh, you know, Peter, he was toiling all night to catch fish. And uh, you've heard this scripture so many times. And uh, a couple of years ago, I, I received this scripture many, many times, this word. I got it all, all the time, you know, cast your net on the other side. Cast your net on the other side. And man, it bamboozled me. And one day I was driving somewhere in the Karoo, I think, or coming back from, from Port Elizabeth. And I got an email. I had my phone. And there was an email from Doug Addison. I subscribed to his to his uh, group and uh, he was sharing that exact same scripture and I actually pulled off the road. I thought the Lord must be talking to me now because I was like, you know, talking to Papa the whole time about this particular word and Doug Addison sends this, this email and not only to me but to everybody in his, in his group, uh, in his subscription list and he, he says the net, he used to get the same scripture and the net th the in his case was the internet, the internet. So what happened with him was he had a ministry and the Lord was speaking to him to use the internet as a net to catch more fish. You get it? So he was using the internet. So I want to speak to you, I want to just speak to you people right now you in ministry, even in business as well. But you have been so adverse to, to using technology. You've been scared of the technology. I'll just I say to you today, use the internet. Use the internet, and the Lord is going to bring so many fish into your business, in through your ministry as well. You're going to touch so many more people. If you've got something to say, people will listen to you. I promise you. I mean, there are so many people on YouTube today 
that have got channels and they are talking and they are influencing people. Why not you? That's my, my question to you today. Why not you? Amen. So I want, I, want you to, I want you to get excited about the things of the Lord because many people think, oh man, I've just got this job. You know, the Lord doesn't want you to just have a job. He wants you to have an abundance. You know, he wants to, he wants to, he wants to make you a financier of the kingdom. And many people right now, if, you, if you're honest with yourself, many people even struggle to pay their bills, let alone finance the kingdom. And the Lord wants to raise up entrepreneurs. He wants to raise up multimillionaires. I don't know if I'm speaking to the right people right now, but he wants to raise up multimillionaires. Oh, does I said the Lord wants to raise up multimillionaires. They didn't catch it on that side. I just, I just need you to believe with me for a moment. I just want you to believe with me for a moment because I'm that crazy guy that actually believes that. You know? And, and the Lord wants to raise up multimillionaires, but he wants you to, to get over this thing here between your, between your two ears. You know? Put, put, your, put your brain on, on the back burner for a while and just step into what he has got for you. He wants to raise up, I'll say it one more time, he wants to raise up multimillionaires to finance the kingdom of, the, of God. You know, because God wants to get money to you, but can he get it through you? Did you get that one? Some things are better caught than taught, Carmen. <laughs> I heard it from Prophet Carmen there. He wants to get money to you, but can he get the money through you? You get it? Right? Because many people, when they get that money, they, oh, thank you, Lord. You know, thank you, Jesus. You know, when they hold that money, they cling it so, so tight. Listen, you need to, Mr. Mandela is sweating in your hands. You know, you've got a picture of Mandela on your, on your, on your note. You know, you need to release him. You need to release Mandela today into the offering box, and you're going to see what the Lord is going to do to your finance. And I just declare f uh, a financial breakthrough to people that are struggling financially. Is there anybody here that is needing a job? You, you're unemployed at the moment. You are unemployed. Come on, stick your hands up. I want to see it. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. You are unemployed. Not you've got a job or you want another job. You're unemployed. Is that right? Unemployed. Okay. I've been getting so many breakthroughs uh, 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 with people praying for them on the radio and people getting jobs. And the next week they send messages through, man, I've got a job. Today a lady sent through a message. Last weekend I think she sent a message through for her grandchildren to get jobs. She sent a testimony this morning. Three of them got jobs. Yay. Yeah, come on. You know, so the Lord is in the recruitment business even. You know, he wants to give you a J-O-B, a job. So those people that just stick your hands up right again, please. I just want to touch you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just pray for each and every person who's got their hand up right now, Lord. And Father, we just pray for supernatural jobs to manifest, to come their ways in this week. In the name of Jesus, Father, we will hear about the testimonies. We will receive the good reports in Jesus' mighty name. Father, the right job for them at the right salary. And may they become kingdom financiers in the name of Jesus. Having said that, I want you to take out your tithe and I want you to, to take out your offering uh, right now and get it ready. And I want you to stand up in the presence of the Lord. We're going to give this offering to the Lord this morning and you're going to mean business. And you know when you, when you give an offering to the king, you must mean business. And you must, mustn't just flippantly throw your money like you're tipping somebody. You are giving to the king. So we stand up in his presence right now and we hold it in your hands. Remember I said to you, you you're making Manda Mr. Mandela sweat. Okay, we need to release him. <laughs> we need to release him this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just thank you right now for each and every seed being sown. We thank you for every offering, Father. We thank you for every tithe. And you that are online today, you can get our banking details of the website. And uh, just you can do it via EFT. And we just thank you right now, Father, for every giver, for every sower. And, Lord, we just release multiplication to them right now in the name of Jesus. We cut off any ties, Father, with that money that they're giving to, you, to your kingdom right now, Father. And we just release it right now, Father, for the harvest that is going to come in. In Jesus' mighty name. And, Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory and all the honor belongs to you. And everybody says, Amen. Thank you so much. We call our Pastor Corney. He's going to try and finish part two of his message he started last week. So give it up <laughs> for Pastor Corney. Thank you, Dane. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, 
Holy Spirit, we just thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you're doing in this church. We thank you for what you're doing in the nations. Thank you for what you're doing in our city. Thank you for what you're doing in the people's lives who are watching on Facebook. And yeah, we just open ourselves to receive what you have for us this morning. In Jesus' name, and bless the preacher. Bless the preacher. It's to your benefit to pray for me if you don't pray for me. You want to get flesh? You don't want to get flesh. You want to get Holy Spirit. Woo! I had such a cool testimony in the week. So this lady, <coughs> she was in a conference, and the guy calls out the word of knowledge for someone who has got a torn um, hamstring. And so she stands up and proxy for her father, wasn't at the conference. And her, co um, her father was at, um, he was on a mission trip to Kenya in December. And he crossed the road in a truck, um, knocked him over, and he tore his hammy. And so he was in hospital. He had surgery, but the, it didn't heal. And just with all the anxiety on top of that, he got a stroke. And so since, since December, he's literally, he's not bedridden, but he can't walk without the cane. And half of his body is paralyzed. His, his leg is still not healed up. And so she stands up um, on behalf of her father. And she said, I just take that word of knowledge to my father. And I'm going to share it with him later. And so that night, the dad dreams. And he dreams that he's in a conference. And someone calls him out. And he got instantly healed. Just like that. That was his. So the next morning he wakes up, and he literally had to roll out of bed to get to his cane. And God says to him, "Why are you reaching out to your cane? I healed you last night." And then, I mean, that thought just came, and then he remembered the dream, and he realized he's completely healed. <laughs> Woo! Someone say Jesus. So when, when a word of knowledge has been called out, and it's not for you here, but you know of someone, just stand up and say, "I take that." I mean, I know, know that the Holy Spirit is not just bound to this place. <laughs> he can do anything, and he keeps on doing it. So that's just a good testimony right there. By the way, I just take authority over a binding spirit, a foreboding spirit. That foreboding spirit go right now. Some of you have been feeling, you almost have this feeling the whole time, something is going to go wrong. It's going to go wrong with me. There's so much fear and anxiety that it's like something is going to go wrong. And that feeling of, I've, I've been overlooked, or I'm not recognized. I just cast that spirit out right now. You are not the victim. You are not the victim. You are awesome. You are far awesome than that spirit who's telling you lies. So that foreboding spirit, go right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> and then I've got another testimony to share. Um, some of you just need to confirm it. Who had... Um, migraine, uh, a headache, especially over your right eye. Is it over your, yeah, over your right eye when you came in that you realized that pain is not there anymore. You, you came in with a migraine and it left. Is that anyone here? Okay, maybe it's someone who's watching. But I just felt that God's already done that healing. So let's just celebrate the testimony in any case. <laughs> Woo. Someone say breakthrough. Increase. I'm just excited because I'm speaking to a lot of happy people here this morning. If you're not happy right now, just say, I'm just switching on my happy right now. So I want you to get your Bibles out again this morning. If you take notes, I'm going to look at a lot of scriptures. I'm going to try and get to a lot of scriptures. Last week, how many of you were here last week? Wasn't that awesome? Wasn't that fun? Awesome. So eventually we're going to get to John 9. I said that last week, but baby, we want to get to John 9 today. <laughs> and if I don't, I told you, go and read it because I, don't, I can't promise it, but we're going to get to, to John 9. I really want to get to John 9. Come on, help me, Jesus. So last week we started to speak on power on display. Everyone say power. We started speaking on power on display, and I'm going to continue with that. I'm still on last week's notes, <laughs> and so we're going to get there. But it's based on the fact that 
in that in the midst of darkness, God's plan is to put your life on display. A life that shines in darkness. I think Sabu made reference to it this morning too. And we know that when darkness shows up, or when light shows up, darkness has to flee. There's no argument. There's no battle. When you switch on the light, darkness just go. And so the enemy knows that. He knows that he can't defeat darkness. So what does he do? He tries for you to hide your light. And how he does that is through fear, is through intimidation, is through insecurity, is through um, shame, peer pressure, and whatever it might be. And by the way, people are going to get set free today. Someone's light bulbs are going to switch on today. Some of, some of you have got your, your light under a basket. And he says, in fact, prophetically, there's a scripture in the Gospels. I don't want to go there because I want to get to my notes. But it says, it says, nobody puts a light under a basket. I know that it refers to that in John 9 and Matthew 5. But it, there's another reference to that, and it says, Nobody puts his light under a basket. That's just stupid. But then he goes on and he says, those who have what they have, even more will be given to them. And those who don't have even what they have will be taken away from them. And this week I was reading that and I felt the Holy Spirit say, the, the way we shine our light is to give away what we've received. So you can't just come here on a Sunday and receive and think your light's going to shine. God will take that deposit, that impartation is given you, and you will give to someone else who can use it. As Dane was sharing, God wants to bless you so that you can bless other people. God wants light to shine in your life, but in order for that to remain shining, you have to give it away. And those who give it away, God will give more to them. So I want you to start taking risks. I want you to, to say, God, I'm serious about this. Whatever you bless me with, I'm going to bless other people with it. And you will see how the anointing, how that thing increases in your life. And so I want us to look again. I read the scripture last week, Matthew 5. I want to read from the, the Passion Translation again. And it says this. I just love it. Matthew 5 from verse 14. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light. I want you to say that I'm here to be light. Bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. And here it is. We're going public with this. We're going public with this as public as a city on a hill. And if I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you in a basket. Do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. And now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. So God expects us to shine. And that's what we've been talking about. God's plan for the nations, God's plan for the world is to put your life on display. God wants you to go public with the light that is shining in your life. Because the kingdom that you and I are part of is a kingdom that has to be demonstrated. And the way we, the, the, the God does this is through radical love and supernatural power. So this gospel of the kingdom, I'm still just recapping from last week for those who weren't here last week, but it's good just to be reminded of that. The gospel of the kingdom was never meant just to be in the word, but also in demonstration of power. And then in Matthew 28, we looked at that too. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me. So if God's got all authority, how much authority does the devil have? Zero. Thank you, Art. And if God has given all authority to you, how many authority does the spirit of this world have? None. You've got all the power. You've got all the authority but you have to step in and set yourself up for a life of risk-taking and saying, God, I'm, I'm serious about this. I believe your word. I'm going to be a shining light in the world. See, here's the good news. Every one of us, if you are here this morning and you call yourself a believer, if you call yourself a follower of Jesus Christ, the good news is that each one of us have a supernatural ministry just waiting to manifest. 
You know, do I know that? Because Jesus says it. He says in Mark 16, verse 17 to 18, he says, And these miracles, these miracle signs will accompany those who believe. There's a qualification. Those who believe, these signs will follow their life. They will drive out demons. They will speak in tongues. They will be supernaturally protected from snakes and from drinking anything poisonous. And they will lay hands on the sick and heal them. That's a guarantee for those who believe. 1 Corinthians 3.20 For the gospel is not just a matter of talk, but it is in. So we need to do that over. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of. See, we live in a culture that elevates information above experience. But the kingdom that we are part of is so much different. The gospel of the kingdom was not just to be talked about, but is to be demonstrated. I don't just want to talk about your freedom. I want you to experience freedom. I don't just want to talk to you about salvation. I want you to experience salvation. I don't want just want to talk to you about testimonies and people getting healed. I want to lay hands on you and say, receive your healing. I don't want to just talk about the kingdom. I want you to encounter it. I want you to experience it. And I often say, people won't get healed unless what? Unless I pray for them. <laughs> you know, people often make a remark and they say, you know, Miracles are not the whole gospel. Stop talking about miracles. And that is true, but neither is the gospel without them the full gospel. The good news without love and power is not good news. It has to be experienced. It has to be experienced. You see, that's the difference between the kingdom and religion. Religion idolizes concepts and avoids personal experience. But this morning, we're going to encounter God. Some of you, we've already encountered God. <laughs> we spoke about this often. Encounter is so, much, so important. The Bible is full of people who encountered and experienced the goodness of God, and their lives would change. Mark 2. I love this. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days. And it was heard that he was in the house. It was heard that he was in the house. I want to be part of a community of believers. I want to be part of a church that says, I've heard about you. I've heard that Jesus is in your house. When you go to school, people need to come up to you and say, I have heard that Jesus is wherever you are. Jesus is in Hudson. Jesus is in Vincent. Jesus is in Terry, wherever. Jesus is in Sinai. I've heard about the Jesus that you serve, and wherever you go, Jesus is. I've heard about it. And now listen to this, verse 2. Immediately many gathered. When people hear Jesus in the place, everyone will start to gather. That's why we don't rush our worship. That's why we don't rush with the presence of God because we are all about Jesus. We're all about hosting His presence. You know what? We don't care the show. If the show doesn't go on, it's fine. We're not about show business. We're about hosting His presence because we want people to hear about Jesus. And when people hear about Jesus, that presence, that anointing draws people. So it was heard that Jesus was in the house, and immediately many people gathered. And then they came to him, bringing a paralytic. That's what happened. When people hear Jesus in the house, they are desperate. They, they, they don't just hear it, but they gather, and then they bring the sick. And so Jesus heals this guy miraculously. Let's just celebrate that testimony. Woo! <laughs> but then it concludes, and I love this. Verse 12 at the end there, it says, We never saw anything like this 
before. I want to be part of the church. I want to be part of the ecclesia. Where people come because they've heard. And when they come, they experience, they encounter. And out of that encounter, they say, we've never experienced anything like this before. Tell us more about Jesus. I don't want people just to become fans of Jesus. I want people to encounter Jesus. I want people to taste and see that God is good. I want to be part of a community of believers that change history. The history of this city, this nation. I want to be part of a community that dares to take risks. A few years ago, I was at, at Vincent, the True Wits. I wasn't meant on going there, but I saw there was a sale going on and I needed shoes, so I thought I'll just check it out. So I went there into True Wits and Vincent. You all know where that is. You should know where that is. And so I walked into the True Wits here to this shoe section, and uh, I got my shoes. Thank you, Jesus, over there and, and especially. So I got shoes. And so I'm quite chuffed with myself, and I'm standing there in the checkout line. There's about six people in front of me, six or ten people, I can't remember. And I'm standing there in the line waiting to, to, um, to pay, and I've heard this tap on my shoulder. And I turn around, and this lady with, with, with crutches standing there and says, Excuse me, sir, do you mind just holding my place in the line? I'm in such pain, um, and it's just so much, it's so painful for me to stand here. And so I looked. And I, and I saw this day and I said, absolutely, on one condition. And she's like, she's sort of taken aback with the fin. I said, but um, can I pray for healing for your legs afterwards? And she says, absolutely, no problem. So the lady goes and sits there on, on uh, those little benches there in the, the shoe sections that you see in stores. So she sits there and uh, waiting in the line. And so it's a deal. I'm keeping a place. And in return, she allows me to pray for her, her legs. I'm standing here like, again, one of those moments. What the heck did you just say? <laughs> Any case, so everything is done. So afterwards, the lady pays for stuff. And so we're there in the shoe section because she can't walk too long. So I said, well, you just sit there. I'm going to kneel here. I'm going to pray for your legs. So, man, and leg is swollen like this. So she had a, a knee replacement surgery. She had some other surgery and a, a, a leg, and it got infected, and it just it didn't heal properly, and so it's just inflamed, and she's in so much pain, and especially when she moves a lot, it just swells, and so you can see this lady's in pain. So I prayed there for her, and again, suddenly nothing happens. So I'm like, you know, you know, and I'm like, no, pain is illegal. This is not allowed in heaven. So as I'm praying, I'm seeing, so one of the, the um, people who works at Truth, she's standing there, so she's listening. So I'm like, okay, well, I might as well preach a little bit. So I'm just going to up my volume a little bit. So I'm like, no, this is wrong because there's no pain in heaven. And so it's illegal in your legs. So we're going to pray again. And so I prayed again. I prayed for about two or three times, and, and I saw more people started gathering just randomly, just standing there. I'm like, okay, well, I've got an audience. I've got a, I've got a congregation here. And so, man, so I'm just testifying of God's goodness, and I'm like, it's not my responsibility to heal. It's his responsibility, but I'm just going to share the goodness of God. And so, and the more I pray, so I'm asking from a scale from 1 to 10, test it out. And eventually she starts like, man, I can feel a bit of tingling. And yeah, there's some move, more movement. I'm saying, well, come on, let's celebrate that. And we celebrate that. And so more you know, people are standing there. So they want to look, but they're not really want to look. So, you know, like those curious lookers. But, man, I see them. I see them. And so, I'm, so eventually we got this lady. Now me and her, she's, we are walking up and down in the shoe section. How's it feeling now? No, it's feeling better. And it's like, come on, you know, Jesus loves you. And. You know, Jesus commanded, he taught us to pray, as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. For we know that there's no sickness in heaven, so we can pray it here on earth. And you're going to experience God's goodness today. And the more we walk, she's like, man, it's getting better. And eventually, so I'm still holding, eventually she's put, putting the one crutch down. She's already put the other crutch on. And she eventually got completely healed. It took us about 10 minutes. Come on. 
Woo! And she's like, man, I couldn't do this and I can bend. And she lit, she, she took up, I wish it was a bed, but it wasn't. But she took up her crutches and I blessed her and she left. So I'm like, man, and so I'm totally pumped up by now, as you can imagine. And I'm also, I mean, I almost forgot about my congregation again. And I'm standing there, and this lady comes up to me, the supervisor, she comes up to me, and she says, excuse me, sir, I saw what just happened here. That's incredible. Do you go from store to store and pray for people? And I say, no, I just go from store to store and see where I can find deals on shoes. And I manage to find shoes. And she's like, really, you don't do a delivery? I say, no, I came shopping. And she said, well, do you have time? I would love for you to go and pray for my department. And I'm like, okay, what department is this? She says, the cosmetic department. <laughs> so I say, okay, so we walk over to the, the cosmetic department in True Words, there in Vincent. And so my congregation follows me. My sheep follow me. So there I go. <laughs> And we stand in a cosmetic department. You know, the ladies in the cosmetic department, they all got their high heels and their makeup and all their things. And so I've got so, there's so many people. I'm like, and again, I'm like, okay, well, the best thing that you can do right now is just grab someone's hand, stand in a circle. I'm just going to release God's goodness over you, whatever your need is. Because I realize some of you might have needs here that might be sensitive. So just grab hands. And I'm going to release the goodness of God. You're going to, you're going to experience um, the love of God today. And the lady next to me, as I grab her hand, she starts vibrating and she starts wiping up out over the cosmetic stand here behind her. So I'm getting my catches on that side. I said, just catch your colleague. She's going to mess up the whole stand. So, man, revival just broke up then and...
And he went, speaking about Jesus, he went through every city preaching, everyone say preaching, and bringing. It's a show and tell gospel. Preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the gospel. And Luke 9 verse 2, the disciples. Then Jesus called the twelve and gave them power and authority, and he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And in verse 6 it says, So they departed and they went through all the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everyone who was afflicted. We, have, we can't just preach about it, we have to demonstrate it. We can't just tell people about it, we have to show people about it. Woo! And again, here's a question that I've, that I've been convicted of for so many years. Why is it that the Apostle Paul needed the power of the gospel to validate his message? Why is it that Jesus wasn't satisfied just to talk about it? Why is it that the disciples, for them to validate their message, talking about it wasn't enough? And yet somehow we think as a church of the living God, we think it's okay just to talk about the gospel because we don't want to offend people. We want people to come back into our safe environment. <laughs> Let's laugh at that. If we are serious about the billion soul harvest that's been prophesied so many times over the last 15 years, we can't just talk about it. We have to put ourselves in the place where people are going to encounter God through your life and through my life. A portion of the gospel will get people saved, but if we truly want to fully produce it, we have to provide miracles. And so finally, we're going to turn to John 9. <laughs> Woo! Someone give it up. John 9. <laughs> so we read there in Matthew 5 that you are the light of the world. We established that we are God's plan to bring revival, reformation to the nations. And there's two things that are connected here, light and works. I'm going to show you in a moment. We, we read there in the beginning in Matthew 5, Jesus says, You are the light of the world. Now let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. 
remember that. But now here in John 9, it's a similar passage where Jesus refers to himself as the light of the world. And he says, while I'm doing the works, uh, he refers to himself as the light of the world, while he's doing the works of the Father. And so again, how do we let our light shine? Through radical love and through demonstration of power, doing the works of God. So we're going to start reading it from verse 1, John 9. I'm really excited about this. Woo, we made it. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. I want you to think about this, a, ma a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus said, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent, I must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. Here it is. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And after saying this, he spat on the ground and he made some mud with the saliva and put it on a man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in a pool of psyllium, which means sin. And so the man, the man went and washed and came home seeing. So this is what you need to understand. And this is my point this morning. Jesus comes and he says, I am the light of the world. But then after he said that, after he made that statement, he demonstrated that light by bringing healing to this man. So a blind man got healed as a demonstration that when light comes, darkness has to flee. And when darkness comes, light shines. And that's where, that word works is the same Greek word that Jesus speaks of in Matthew 5 when he speaks about you and I as being light. And when Jesus says, you are the light of the world, now go and do the works of the Father. You see, a lot of people interpret that as, I need to be humble. I need to love and hug people. I need to do good works. And again, all those things are noble. They are good. Go and buy groceries for someone. It is important. But that's not what Jesus speaks about here. Jesus is speaking here about power. That Greek word there we, we refers to light and works is light and power. The way you let your light shine is through power. That is the context of John 9, and that is the context of Matthew 5. It's talking about power. So when we are called in Matthew 5 to do the works of God, for other people to see our good works and glorify God, He's not talking about random acts of kindness. He's talking of demonstration of power. He's talking about the power of God displayed through your life. So how do light shine? You have radical love and you let supernatural power flow through your life. And in the same way as the Bible says that perfect love casts out all fear, in the same way, darkness flee when light comes. And fear flees when light shows up. And when power comes, sickness has to flee. Disease has to flee. Oppression has to flee. Addiction has to flee. Depression has to flee. Demons have to flee. That is the assignment that you and I have. And it's time to go public with that. It's time to go public with that. So five things that power demonstrates. I'm going to see how far I'm going to get with this. We might have to carry on next week with this. But power demonstrates five things. The rea first, the reality of the kingdom. Power demonstrates, in other words, uh, power demonstrates that God is real. But second of all, also demonstrate that God is close. The third one is power demonstrate the nature and the character of the Father. Fourth one, power demonstrate the authority of Jesus to save. And the fifth point is power demonstrate the supremacy 
of Jesus. So I want to quickly run through these five points. I'm going to see time-wise how I'm going. But power demonstrate, point number one, the reality of the kingdom, a superior kingdom, an unshakable kingdom. In, in, in John 10, 38, Jesus said, if you don't believe my words, believe these signs, believe the works that I do. And so there's a, there's a reality, there's a kingdom reality that is more real than this pulpit. It's real more, it's, it, it's more real than this carpet, the chair that you are sitting on. It's an unseen kingdom. And when a kingdom shows up, a superior reality shows up. I remember when we first started the first, well, the second healing rooms after this one at Stony Drift. This was about 10 years ago, and Mama Carol Campbell, she opened that healing rooms in Stony Drift, and guess who's the first person who came to the healing rooms? It was the Sangoma, the, the guy who was overseeing that whole territory. And so this Sangoma, he walks here with a, with a crutch because he had a stroke. He, he was paralyzed and one part of his body, and he walks in there very aggressively with, with intimidation, and he goes and stands in front of Carol and he says, who do you think you are and what are you doing? This, this is my land. Obviously, he could pick up in his spirit what was happening here, and Carol stands in front of him, and she just laughed at him. He says, um, my young man, God loves you so much, and he's going to heal you today. And he wanted to still flat out you know, arguments and Feminist thoughts and whatever. And she says, I'm just going to grab you and Jesus is going to heal you right now. And she prayed for him before he could say anything else. And he got healed supernaturally. I love that. When the kingdom of heaven shows up, when the power of heaven shows up, a superior reality shows up. You can't argue against that. You have to experience that. The second point, power doesn't just demonstrate that God is real, but that he is close. You know, it's fascinating that studies have shown that no, most people are not atheists. It's really, it's, you really need a lot of faith to, to, to be an atheist. Most people are not atheists. They believe in a superior being. They believe in a force out there. But they believe that it is distant, that it's more of a philosophy, that it's a thought. Power demonstrate that God is close and that He is real. I remember years ago, we were, um, I was in Nashville doing, we were part of this conference, well, not conference, we were speaking there on a, uh, over a weekend, and we did the fire tunnel afterwards, praying for people, and there was a, a husband and a wife coming through the fire tunnel, and I felt the Holy Spirit said to me, grab this lady's face and kiss her on the forehead. I'm like, and it's, man, it was, it was, it was during the summer, and it was hot, I was sweaty, and I could see, it was, I mean, it was just chaos broke out, it was just a wild Holy Spirit meeting, and I'm sweaty, and I can see this lady is sweaty, and I'm like, I'm not going to kiss someone on a sweaty forehead, come on, and Holy Spirit said, kiss this lady, grab her hand, a uh, face in your hand, and just kiss her on the forehead, and say, daddy loves you. And I'm like, so they come there, and this lady, she's also, she's not been carried by her husband, but held by her husband. She, I can't remember what is wrong with her. She couldn't walk properly. And you could see, she's just, there's so much depression. There's so much sadness over this lady. And as it came before me, I turned to the, to the two of them, and I said, excuse me, sir, ma'am, um, do you mind? I just feel Holy Spirit told me to kiss you on your forehead. And, I, and she's like, bit awkward, I'm awkward, and I asked her husband, is this okay? And he says, you know, whatever, we are so desperate. If you heard from God, go for it. And I took this lady head in my hand, and I and I said, Daddy loves you. As I did it, I mean, she just screamed. She's like, Wah! and she flung back, wiped out. I'm like, oh my word, she's broken her back or something. She's lying there vibrating and stuff, and, but immediately she sets up, and she just cries. She's just bawling. She's just bawling. He says, I've been struggling with this affliction in my life, tormented spirit for more than 40 years. 
I've, I've been abused by a stepfather. I've just been abused by so many men, and I've been trying to be set free. And I remember as a little girl before my mother and father divorced, my daddy always used to come to me, and he would take my head in his hand. And he'd just say, Daddy loves you. I don't have that. I just always felt God is cross with me. God, where are you? And in that moment, she experienced the closeness of God. That's what power does. I can tell her that God loves her. I can tell her all these beautiful things. But it is in the encounter, it's in the power that you experience the closeness of God. And another trip, <laughs> I have to tell this story. And another, are you okay? And another trip. Me and Nigel, we were in Vacaville. It's in the uh, San Francisco Bay area. We're ministering in a church, and we're calling out um, prophetic words, words of knowledge. And so we called out uh, the worship pastor and his wife to come up, and they come and stand in front of us, this young couple. They're probably in their 30s. And, I mean, we were just having so much fun. And so I'm still ministering to her, and I'm still, and Nigel is standing there. He's like, and if anyone knows Nigel, Nigel doesn't stand still or his lips also doesn't stand still. He's always doing something or saying something. But Nigel, the <laughs> I mean, he's just <laughs> quiet. And so I'm giving an incredible word, and he's like, he's like, Chris, Chris, I just want to ask you something. And he's like, I felt God told me to bite this girl's hand. And so I'm bursting out of love, like, dude, it's all, if you've heard from God, that's all on you. And it's like, but this is the first time we've been here. These people don't know us. I don't know. It's like, man, just, you know, just state the truth. You've heard God. I'm like, this, I mean, there's no pressure on me. It's all on him. <laughs> and so eventually, he's, he's, oh, this is quite weird, but I feel God told me to bite your hand. And everyone's like, hee hee, giggle, hee 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 hee. So seriously, I need to bite you, and can I get your hand? So like, okay. And she's holding her hand out, and he's like, he's like, and he heard God say, and nothing happens, and it's like totally awkward. And, and he heard the Holy Spirit tell him, I didn't tell you to nibble a hand. I told you to bite the hand. <laughs> so he takes the hand again. Hum! As he bites the hand, this woman starts twirling in circles, and the joy eats her. I mean, she's like, brrr, brrr, all over the place. It was so intense, we couldn't speak to her. Only in the evening service, we found out what happened. And she basically told us that she said, when I was little, when always when I got excited, and especially with my family, a way that I, I was, I couldn't express the emotion of love and excitement and nearness and closeness that I felt. So I would just reach out and bite my sister's hand. Or I would just bite my daddy's hand or anyone. That used to be my thing. I don't know why, but that's how I grew up. And as you bite my hand, God said, to me that I'm not just a father to you, but I'm a, uh, I'm a daddy who is close to you, who loves you, and you will always be my girl. And she just got set free from so many lies that she believed about God. That's what power does. Power shows that God is real. I'm just going to do quickly the last few ones. Power demonstrates the nature and the character of God. Psalm, 30, Psalm 63, verse 2 and 3 says, I have looked in your sanctuary to see your power and your glory. And because of that, your loving kindness is better than life. Power reveals the kindness of God. Those two ladies, that's what power did for them. It revealed, revealed the nature of a good daddy. Now, some of you may come from an environment where your daddy is distant, where you've never had a daddy affirming you. Maybe you've come from an abusive environment. God is nothing like that. And there's moments where you can talk about all those wounds and all those healings, but it is power that reveal the character and the nature of God. We've seen people encountering God here at our prayer lines, through fire tunnels, through worship that years and years of counseling could never do for them. God's a God of power, and one of the reasons why it's a God of power is that it reveals His heart and His nature. Many of you in this auditorium this morning or watching on Facebook have had experiences like that. I had experience like that when I got saved in a bar. And not only 
that God became real to me. Not only that he came close, but I encountered him for the first time as a daddy who loves me. He's not intimidated by my messes, by my mistakes. That's why we are a house that are passionate about people experiencing the goodness of God. Jesus came to reveal the heart of the Father. And he's a God that longs to be connected to sons and daughters. You see, that's what the enemy does. The enemy try and distort our view of God by telling us lies. So many lies have broken up this morning. But when you, it's like some of you, God, I just want to taste and see that I, that you are good. You know, maybe it's like, man, Sometimes your breakthrough comes by just celebrating what God's doing in someone else's life. When you see some things happening here or God's touching someone there, instead of allowing it to irritate you, just say, God, thank you so much for what you're doing in that person. Lord, I honor, I thank you that you're in our midst. Sometimes your breakthrough comes by just recognizing that he's in a room with you. Don't become a victim. Don't try and compare yourself. But by faith, just say, God, thank you that you're a good God, that you desire to encounter me, that you invite me into experience with you, that I can fall more in love with you. All he desires is a daddy who wants to reveal himself to you, not in your mind, but in your heart, through experience. And then the fourth point, the power demonstrate the authority of Jesus to save. If you read the Gospels, it often refers to many believed as a result of the healings and the miracles that he did. And in the final point, the power reveals the supremacy of Jesus. The name of Jesus is higher than any other name. The name of Jesus is higher than cancer. The name of Jesus is higher than depression. And at the cross, Jesus forever establishes supremacy. That's why we take communion. Communion is the healthiest meal that you can take. If you have to take it every day, take it every day. When you come into alignment, God, thank you that your body was broken for me. You died not just for my sins, but also for my sicknesses, for my infirmities. When you partake of the body, you step into an encounter and say, God, thank you that I'm encountering, that I come into union with your body. When I take of your cup, it's like I receive a fresh impartation from you. Your emotions, your, um, your senses might not feel it, but if you believe that you receive it in your spirit, it will more and more, your senses will come into alignment with the reality that's happening in your spirit. And when you pray for people, when e even if you just lay your hand on someone, you need to know that there's power flowing through you. When you stand and chat to someone, you need to know that their spirit receive from the spirit that you carry. You carry an atmosphere. You carry light. When you start thinking like that, when you start walking like that and talking like that, you will start seeing miracles break out in your life. Amen. Won't you all stand? I'm going to ask Pastor Dane to come and wrap up for us. Don't be satisfied with a watered-down religion. Don't be satisfied with something that doesn't taste good anymore. If Coke can do it, how much more can we as sons and daughters of God do it? Pastor Dan, why don't you wrap it up and pray for people. I've got our prayer servants that's going to come up. If you need um, healing in your body, if you need prayer in your body, if you still want to come and take communion, um, please come up and receive that. We had a meeting, a House of Revival meeting here next door on Thursday night. And one of Hart's uh, roommates or housemates, she said to me, Pastor Dane, Jesus was in East London last week Sunday. Now this is last week Sunday, yeah? So she said this to me on Thursday night. She said, Jesus was in East London on Thursday. I said, what do you mean? She said, I was, I was so I was sharing what happened here at, at GA last week Sunday. She doesn't come to GA. Uh, and I was just sharing about the outbreak and, and so forth that was taking place here. 
And uh, she said, Jesus was in East London last week Sunday. I said, what do you mean? She says, man, I was listening to you on the radio on Sunday morning. And you said, you are one praise away from your miracle. And she said, I wasn't planning to go to church at all. Because I was feeling so, I think she was feeling ill. And uh, she said, I wasn't planning to go to church. But I got up and I got dressed. And I, wo- and I went to church, and she, she demonstrated, she said she was walking, you know, like she was in a lot of pain when she was going to church. And she said she got radically healed during the service while they were worshiping. Nobody laid hands on her. And you know, the devil is such a liar, my friend, that he's going to keep you away from your healing. He's going to keep you away from your breakthrough. So this morning, as a son of God, I want to ask you and, and, and tell you that you are one praise away from your miracle. We've got some powerful people that is going to be standing up front here. Don't look at them, but look at the, the Jesus in them. And come and receive that healing. Come and receive that breakthrough. Come and receive that freedom that you need to get. Don't leave this place the same as you were when you came in. If there is something that you needed from God today and you didn't receive it, you can receive it. Don't leave the same way. God wants to, He wants you to encounter His goodness today. So come up, please. If you need prayer, come up and come and receive prayer. Don't be in a hurry. Lunchtime is going to still be there when you get home. The chicken is still going to be there. It's not going to run away. So come and receive today from the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank our Facebook audience.